Hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Kate Green, and I will be one of the hosts for these two days of our Seeds, Sur Seeds of Survival conference. We had a really good day yesterday, and the recording and PowerPoints will be available from yesterday in case you were not able to join us at that time. I am a program manager in the Rural Women Cultivating Change project of Seed Change. We want to acknowledge that the Office of Seed Change is located on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabeg people, and we must work to continue, we must work to counter continued colonialism and support indigenous and food and seed sovereignty in all that we do. Now I'd like to introduce Daniel Wanjama from the Seed Savers Network in Kenya, who's going to give a few thoughts from yesterday in case you were not with us. Daniel is the executive director of Seed Savers Network in the Gilgil region of Kenya. Seed Savers is a grassroots organization of primarily women farmers engaged in local biodiversity conservation and enhancement, and is a key partner of Seed Change in the Rural Women Cultivating Change Project. Daniel, could you give us a few of your thoughts on the presentations and discussions? And after that, we will go to Rosa in Cuba. Thank you, Kate. I'm happy to be here again today. Je suis content d'être ici encore aujourd'hui. Engagement yesterday and a very important discussion we had yesterday. Hier et, uh, excellent, uh, yeah. sorry, good presentations. Uh, here in Kenya, we are happy to continue connecting with the international community uh, because it's clear that uh, part of the challenges that we are facing on the local seed system are also experienced in other places in the world. And uh, we, we, we are happy to continue connecting like this. Because one of the biggest challenges is that 80% uh, uh, of the seeds that are used by the farmers to grow food in Kenya, they come from farmers themselves. So they come from the local uh, food system. And yet those seeds are not recognized by the government. They are not, uh, they are somehow, I would say, quote unquote, criminalized. Uh, because they are not uh, registered and they are not uh, certified and therefore they are criminal seeds, yet they are the seeds that uh, feed the country. And without some actions from uh, people like us, Seed Savers Network, other organizations at grassroots level, without some action, it would, uh, and also farmers, a lot of farmers who are working in solidarity to preserve these seeds, it would mean farmers do not have seeds at all to use for, uh, for, for food production. And it would mean uh, hunger, food insecurity, it would mean nutrition insecurity. And that's why we need to work together uh, in solidarity. Because the, 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 the seeds that are recognized by the government uh, a lot of time they are foreign seeds, like for commercial seeds that are vegetable seeds, uh, Kenya import over 95% of the seeds that are commercial. Uh, that means uh, our seeds in Kenya, Kenya I mean Kenyans uh, seeds that are belong to the farmers are neither registered nor, nor commercialized, therefore local seed systems are very important. And that's why it's important to continue having this exchange. For instance, uh, we, we, we in Kenya passed a new constitution. Uh, it, it implies to recognition of farmers' rights. Somehow farmers' rights were considered, but I, I believe it is because of the international treaty for or plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. Uh, this is what informed the stakeholders to somehow consider farmers' rights. And therefore, uh, it's very important to continue exchanging, engaging at international level, because some of the items negotiated at international level 
they have an impact at local level. And uh, we continue uh, somehow enjoying some of the rights because uh, international community is active in this issue. And of course, knowledge sharing is very important. We have uh, indigenous knowledge here that we are very uh, proud of. Uh, knowledge that is generated through practice, through common sense, a lot of time not verified by what is called peer review, but uh, it's good knowledge that has transformed the communities for many years. And uh, therefore, we are still able to survive as communities uh, with this knowledge. Therefore, it is important knowledge. And this knowledge, because it's not documented, it's always uh, able to be shared when people have exchange, people have interactions. And this kind of interactions, like the one we are having today, uh, is, is, is very important in passing some of this knowledge, uh, sharing experience, and uh, people getting to learn from each other. So uh, I don't want to say much, but uh, I'd like to, to thank uh, everyone who is here and welcome you to reason to these uh, presentations and also participate effectively and uh, actively. And I want to thank Audi and Seed Change for continuous support and uh, continuous organizing uh, this kind of uh, processes uh, that uh, make us learn from each other. So thank you very much and welcome for today's webinar. Thank you very much, Daniel. It was really good to have you bridge between day one and day two of this conference. Um, we're very pleased that Blanca Castro could join us today. Blanca is an agronomist specialist in participatory plant breeding and local seed production on maize, beans, and sorghum. For the last 15 years, she has led the participatory development and release of new crop varieties, working with cooperatives in Nicaragua. Blanca has extensive experience in the production of local seeds, and with community seed banks and how they relate. Okay, Beatriz will show the slides. Good day. I'm gonna share a bit uh, the uh, impact study uh, exposed of the uh, participatory plant breeding program that we had in Nicaragua. I'll, I'll try to uh, present the main points of this uh, impact study. The research we was done using the uh, IPES-SIDA methodology, which is focused on the uh, uh, impact path, and we did this. In, uh, we did this at the first level, and also with other authors that didn't participate directly in this uh, research. This was uh, the authors are Dr. Gilles Truche of uh, Siran, and we also had uh, uh, the team of uh, FECODESA that participated also. Here you can see the different uh, phases of the study. We uh, had a review of literature and reports. Then we did a, a survey with the producers the farmers uh, with uh, also samples of uh, leaves and uh, seeds. And then we also had a, a local activities with these producers. Here, I won't get into the details of this presentation, this slide, because it's quite detailed. But just to get, I want you to have an idea of the process that uh, this uh, project went through. It started in the year 2000, and then we had a, a segment uh, with uh, uh, producers who weren't uh, organized. We assessed some of the materials that they had 
and then the, we started uh, uh, producing uh, varieties and experimented with it, and then we had this certification. And you have it in the bottom of the this slide, you can see uh, the different uh, participations that were. There was a participation and integration and uh, broadcasting. That uh, there were different uh, par uh, parties that were involved in the later phases of the project. Here, uh, we have the, the network of uh, different uh, actors, players uh, involved in the sorghum. And here we have different focuses. We have the donors, and then the public Nicaraguan institutions, and the influential actors who are uh, decision makers at the national level. And, and we also have the main organizations, the main actors that were involved, such as the research organizations like CIRAD, CIAT, and INTA Esteli. And then, and then we have the uh, impacted uh, producers who are the uh, producers of uh, sorghum, uh, beans and and corn and there are a few uh, other organ NGOs and uh, producer organizations involved that were involved also okay also regarding uh, uh, beans we can see who are the participation, the participants. We have uh, the same, pretty much the same uh, donors and public institutions. We have a sea change, sea change, which was one of the uh, main donors of the program, and we had in the. We have the Samorano as a, the leaders in the uh, research, uh, the UCR of Costa Rica, and among the uh, impacted uh, producers, we have other uh, farmers from other regions of uh, the region that weren't involved directly in the project, and a few other organizations with whom we, we worked. <coughs> There were other local uh, NGOs and uh, cooperatives. And also the, uh, uh, the uh, sellers of uh, beans also were involved. And we have uh, export organizations also that were involved and uh, from Honduras that were involved in the, uh, in the purchase and export of uh, the, uh, the beans to Honduras. Okay. So we're gonna look at the results now. Thank you. Here you can see some of the results that we obtained. In the study, we were able to determine that one of the main achievements is uh, the, uh, the collection of uh, local varieties of bean and sorghum. And there were also improved varieties which were registered and uh, then uh, sold. And another one uh, achievement is uh, the, uh, the methods and, uh, and experimental protocol, protocols that were used in the participatory plant breeding with groups of agriculture of farmers. 
and also there's uh, training modules that were produced and there we also have new uh, promoters what were the changes we had the promotion of them the uh, participatory plant breeding uh, methodology we also have a, a quite widespread uh, local adoption of the improved varieties we have a better access to quality seeds in the entire region there's a greater diversification of of uh, crops and varieties and also uh, agroecological practices have been adopted by the farmers and the direct consequences of this these uh, different uh, results was there's a uh, greater value has been given to uh, the basic grains the, the, they are considered of greater value we have a greater and more stable production we also have the recognition of a local community leadership and also uh, food security and nutritional security was improved and there were new methodologies that were introduced uh, indirect uh, effects were the institutionalization of the plant breeding participatory plant breeding methodology and also there was an increase in income and we also saw a, a reduction of biodiversity because of the loss of seeds due to uh, droughts and other climatic uh, um, but however we've had uh, the replacement of uh, less productive varieties here are a few other results we have uh, also had the production of uh, thesis uh, of uh, university students we also had the uh, the development of uh, local and national and regional and international dialogue platforms on uh, participatory plant breeding. And we also have uh, seen uh, the generation of new scientific and professional knowledge. Uh, one of the changes was the uh, creation of uh, community seed banks. We also had uh, the strengthening of the farmer organizations and a greater dialogue also. The direct uh, uh, consequences were the uh, commercialization of seeds and grains. There's a greater participation and solidarity and uh, mutual help in uh, agricultural work in the communities. And one of the indirect the consequences was is that uh, in the uh, participatory plant breeding process there is a greater now a greater access to credit and greater support from uh, institutional organizations at the technical level there were a few changes one is the availability of uh, varieties that are well adapted to local conditions we also have a greater diversification of crops in on the farms we have uh, uh, community seed banks the uh, cost for the farmers uh, to purchase these improved seeds is uh, lower because they're there's uh, more accessible and available we also have a a recognition of the role of youth who have a greater knowledge and have learned from their parents and there's also, uh, also awareness raising that has been developed regarding agroecology uh, there's also there was a greater uh, appropriation of uh, women in this these processes and uh, one of the uh, effects was the improvement of the the diet uh, there's it's great more diversified more nutritious with greater quality of products we have the greater production and uh, diversification with uh, 
uh, of uh, an animals, of domestic animals, uh, using the surplus grains that were produced. There's also the uh, the commercialization of uh, adapted seeds at the local level, and there are also a gr greater income and, uh, generally speaking, uh, better uh, living conditions of the families. Here you can see a few individual and collective changes that were mentioned in the study. They have to do with the strengthening of the uh, producer organizations in one in because of this they had the greater uh, job and business opportunities there's a better uh, communication between the different members of the family this is a was a somewhat a surprise but this uh, process allowed this and there's also greater gender equality and better participation of women and youth but in throughout the process we were able to have the participation of youth and women. also another uh, change was han sido pues más reconocido tanto a nivel nacional como fuera del país también productores que se han formado en el tema de fitomejoramiento y también cuenta algo importante que ellos mencionaban es que la comunidad Bien, las alianzas con otras organizaciones, los créditos, el conocimiento con las mujeres, un mayor empoderamiento, eh, la participación en las ferias, eh, los jóvenes líderes capacitados, dice, en, en cooperativas y la transmisión de conocimiento a otros productores en otras zonas donde no se, no se trabajó con el proyecto. Un reconocimiento individual en la familia, la comunidad y fuera de la comunidad. Eso, mm. siguiente. Eh, estos pues fueron algunos de los impactos que se logró que se logró identificar por ejemplo eh, a, después del, del, del proyecto pues lo que sea sí eh, entonces el uso de variedades eh, un 70 por ciento ¿Me escuchan? Sí. ¿Todo bien? Through the participatory plant breeding. The use of varieties was underlined in the process. 90% uh, percent of the producers said, 70% said they, they use uh, uh, in the case of uh, the beans, it was 30%. This was uh, was 90% in case of sorghum and also the color of this, the beans in the market. So it was only 30% the use of uh, beans and 90% the sorghum. Uh, Blanca, could you, could you remind that the FP means uh, participatory plant breeding? Thank you. And another thing that was uh, uh, came out of uh, the uh, research is that 75% uh, of the pe persons are surveyed uh, uh, taught their kids uh, the uh, participatory plant breeding process. And 60% consider that the program uh, brought uh, uh, new knowledge and a greater capacity to uh, meet the uh, food needs and only 21% consider 
that they uh, improve the production. But this doesn't have to do with the seeds, but rather with uh, climate events, uh, soils, and uh, other uh, factors that aren't directly related to the seeds. So this would be about it. Thank you very much. And if you have uh, need any uh, clarifications uh, with great pleasure, I will try to address them. Thank you very much, Blanca. That was very informative and a really important uh, case study from your experience in Nicaragua. For a few moments, we lost English translation. So in the discussion time later, there may be some questions uh, for those of us who were waiting on the translation, but it did return. Now we have another speaker coming okay. to us from Central America. I'm very pleased to introduce to a combination. We will have two people. Jose Jimenez and Odir Palma are from the organization FIPA. Jose Jimenez is a senior agronomist specialist in the sustainable use and development of agrobiodiversity with 30 years experience in participatory research in Honduras and extensive involvement in local seed production. Currently, he is the executive director of the Foundation of Participatory Research with Honduran Farmers, known as FIPA. Odir Palma is a farmer expert in local seed production and plant breeding from the Cial La Esperanza. He leads the seed committee from the Asocial in Yorito, Honduras. We will now have uh, Jimenez and Odir present, and after that, we will have a, a break. Uh, after that, we will show Rosa's um, video, which we have sorted out the technical issues. So, uh, Jose and Odir, are you able to share your screen? Buenos días, buenos días. Es un... Good day. It's a pleasure to uh, be with you in this uh, meeting. And we will present uh, the system of a local, local certification system, which will be presented by Odir Palma. It's going to be a brief introduction. Then we will talk about the local production, the participatory system, how we escalate the methodology, lessons learned, and challenges that we still have as organization. In Honduras, and the, the participatory approach together with the local committees, we have been working on several varieties of corn and beans. There are several varieties that have been recorded mostly at municipality level. And in some cases, we were able to register them in a formal system. The use of these new varieties have actually enhanced the opportunities and then also provide food serenity to the region. There are lots of communities where these varieties actually allow them to keep on working with their crops and obtaining grain for their food. These new varieties has actually provided their access opportunities to the market and has also enhanced the economic security of each of the families involved. They are able to get extra income after feeding themselves so that they were able to have a better livelihood. When referring to the local production of the varieties, specifically those resulting for the participatory plant breeding, the producers organize seed committees to achieve good quality and enhance serenity. Odir is part of the Esperanza Committee, which is form of eight women to youth, young 
girl, 17 men, and out of those six are youth, young men. They have been working as a committee, and their small seed company legally constitutes, so they are able to market that seed to disseminate these new varieties developed by farmers themselves, there was a need to enhance the local seed production. The participatory approach in the areas we are working on has been key. This system actually allows to organize production to warranty quality assurance. Farmers should have clarity on what production looks like and what and how they are monitoring and in which way the production will be surveyed among the different stages of the crop. This is high quality seed which provide trust among producers using them and has also created economic opportunities for them since these seeds are really good for reproduction and they have a very special color which called the attention producers so the auditing system or surveillance system in the region is based on warranting the source of the seed. They're using registered or basic seed provided by the Pan Americana School. So, this is high quality seed production processes, and they need to understand how local production afterwards that they work on and develop their own uh, auditing committees. Side visits allow them to find challenges in the field and potential paths in the area. They have groups of six men and women who visit the different lots where these seeds have been used to follow up the whole process and to accept or reject based on the sampling and testing they carry out at specific critical stages. They take samples of the different plots of production and they're sent to labs so that they can be analyzed. We lost the audio now. Jimenez, we cannot hear you. I think your mic is off now, Jose. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, this seed produced by farmers is tested and sent to the sanitation labs. Friday last week, we received the results and percentage that were shown from those official labs, the purity level, the right discrimination, and pest management, and all other results, even germination is 95% with higher levels up to 92 in most cases. So the seed production actually show good results of good quality seeds. We are able to connect with the formal system due to the different meetings with the Ministry of Agriculture so that this could be actually assessed in this type of labs. Regionally, they adopt the seed and the committees are also working on the whole marketing of the different products at the local level. In March, the first week of March, they have to provide 150 kilos of corn and bean seeds. The seed committees 
also work together with the seed bank where they protect lots of the material they are using at the local level and in neighborhood areas. The work of, of the committee members is quite interesting, actually, and they have been accepted We lost Jose's audio once again. Many of the different intermediaries that come to the communities to get grain, they are actually reselling aid to other communities because of the great work at that community. They are now well known in other areas. So how this type of experience can be replicated? How can we scale up so that it reaches other regions of the country where members of the National Committee of the Bean Production and together with them and other organizations, we have worked on a pilot project that aims at disseminate this type of committee work at the regional level. A technical committee was created, formed by different community members of the committees, and those members of the National Committee of the Seed Bean. Pain, the agricultural sector experts, and also with the support of the Pan American School. So we had these pilot projects in four regions in the country, and Seed producers of the formal system were surprised by the way we actually identify the seed production challenges. They have never gone through that process themselves, and they said that it is great. You are not part of the formal system. They said that you were actually able to do that, to do this audit and test, which is really important that we should actually do it ourselves. They said that this is something that the technicians actually do at the agricultural ministry, but we're working that directly with farmers and producers. There were also exchange visits. We visit different regions of the country just to widespread the methodology together with the members of the committee. We all went there to show what they have been doing and how they work on the different handbooks and documentation. We are in Honduras. We have three associations working with the same system. And we also have included Santa Barbara region with the rural reconstruction process. They are following the same logic and they have a small local production of seeds. This experience has been scaling up so that it actually move towards the north of the country. Lots of producers are using the material, the documentation that our producers actually created, and this has been a great option for them as well. The experience has been quite positive. And actually, we have several lessons learned out of it. Local production of seed has actually enhanced food serenity and the economy of hundreds of communities in the region. We are reaching other regions based on our experiences. We hope it to be developed and the local uh, production system of seed has actually also enhanced the access and the availability of local seed adapted to emergency contexts such as the pandemic or extreme climate events. The way our producers actually communicate allowed seeds, seeds that uh, are available in community banks of a region to move easily to other community banks of other regions of that country where access to seeds in the formal system never actually had in. And finally, the participatory certification system is an effective proposal to avoid the exclusion of small farmers and the formal systems. So small producers, small farmers are within the formal system, but uh, the seeds they use are actually analyzed. And this is, as uh, mentioned before, high quality seeds, even better sometimes than the ones that the formal system actually produce. 
But this work from the development of the varieties, the identification through the different processes, EPB and others, the work that we have done with the committees, with the follow-up and surveillance mechanisms in place, and, and the ways they also market their own seeds and they become independent and in different regions they have shown all these success but there are still challenges in place climate change is actually creating new problems new challenges in the communities droughts or pests or diseases so we need to keep on working on research, specifically with the participatory approach. We are members of the review committee of the new seed law, but we have still found resistance on the decentralization of the seed systems countrywide because they are afraid to lose control of the seeds at the government level. We believe that it is important to keep on working hard with this type of projects together hand in hand with the government because we can try to promote and try to improve the new potential seed law so that we can actually improve the local exchange. There are challenges. We have not solved the problem fully, but we are working on advocacy as well, which is key. Advocacy at the local level has to be developed. We have taken the first steps. I remember Jesus Sotoro, a region. We even went to the mayor and talked to him so that he can help to finance the seeds, the seeds that were produced in that same seed bank or with municipality of Yorito, where the mayor was actually supporting this type of actions to favor most of small farmers that do not have access to good quality seeds. What was quite interesting is that this is moving on. Even the, the pandemic uh, impact uh, farmers heard. we're moving on and we are still working on research. New varieties have been assessed and registered, so these provide us best the lessons learned that are important to be widespread. Thank you very much for the opportunity to you all from Seed Change and from different organizations who are participating in this event to uh, give us the opportunity to present this experience. We are very glad to be part of this meeting. Thanks. And, and this is probably a way to share what we are actually doing and when we actually know what others are doing around the world. Thanks once again. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jimenez and Odir. We, we, Rosa has been able to join, which is great. Bien, buenos días. Es todo un privilegio poder estar en contacto con ustedes e intercambiar algunas de las experiencias. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be with you today to share with you some of the experience that we have in Cuba on a local certification of seeds in Cuba, methodologies and other lessons learned. I want to thank Seed Change for the invitation to allow us to exchange our knowledge and experiences and what we have learned throughout the collaboration with Dr. Pratat here in Cuba. Thank you to Seed Change colleagues and to all participants who are connected now online and to Cody Institute for providing this opportunity to exchange these experiences. On the local certification and specifically food sovereignty within the framework of the participatory plan reading system, the scope has been huge. We have 12 provinces uh, of the island involved and 75 municipalities due to the 
autonomy of local management of cities. We have these uh, several committees working at the 11 provinces, but also 102 world banks of different varieties based on lessons learned and of more than 15 years of experiences and changes with sea change. He, the origins. We started with the participatory plan breeding approach and we started with continuous testing with management conservation of biodiversity. But this process also allows the enhancement of the different cultivars with the participation of producers, the work of both scientists and producers uh, towards the enhan genetic enhancement of the different varieties and the inclusion of criteria, women and men work at the varietal selection. So we work on several activities, uh, farms related to biodiversity. Entonces, eh, comenzamos desde múltiples cultivos y disciplinas hasta la incorporación en el año 2001 de varias generaciones en este trabajo de fitomejoramiento. Eso fue un aprendizaje sin lugar a dudas porque eh, permitió la incorporación de múltiples enfoques. With also the use of different scenarios and tools has been successful. This has been an active research with several participation involved with the use of several tools and different ways of work. By adding students' views and we were able to change the curriculum and the creation of several new spaces for learning with this point. There was a scaling up stage, a learning process. We were able to go to different regions of the country. And all this change and all this articulated work had its results. We were able to see the importance of focusing at the local and participatory approaches by trying to achieve in socioeconomic and significant impact, but always with the, uh, the view of the seed as the main core. In 2012, 13, and 14, we really learn and refocus spaces of learning with producers, but also we add processes of certification locally based with different stakeholders. With all the learning that we've had, and including with Sea Change and other organizations, we've had a network of learning. Uh, the, the learning network of Sea Change, we have been able to develop a local sea uh, uh, systems. One of the important things has been the production and certification methodology of uh, local seeds. And we have uh, achieved uh, 16 municipalities that have uh, implemented the uh, results of the com certification committees, and they have been able to integrate the uh, uh, production of uh, potatoes with uh, agroecological practice. 
Sin lugar a dudas, eso atributa grandemente a la autosuficiencia de semillas a nivel local y en la respuesta que tienen estos procesos de aprendizaje a situaciones de catástrofe. Cuba es un país muy afectado por los huracanes y eh, todo este eh, proceso tributa a la autosuficiencia, pero sobre todo, por ejemplo, se regulariza el flujo de semillas de los bancos locales de semilla con aporte a estos sistemas de certificación. Case of catastrophes or with specific local conditions, um, we also were are able to identify the preference of markets and producers so that we can produce that specific type of seed. And after a whole assessment of different structures countrywide, based and supported by the government, the government support localities with the different horizontal participatory meaning. Tenemos eh, como parte de ello, entonces, eh, protu protocolos de producción local de semillas como guía de los principales pasos fundamentales para ejemplo, eh, de gran importancia la seguridad alimentaria. Nuevos protocolos para la producción y certificación local de semillas de otros cultivares como frijol, panzo, eh, papa, arroz y soya. Y en estos momentos, y otros actores y además están siendo reconocidos por tanto tener eh, una documentación de ello es muy importante y por supuesto contamos con los referentes para el escalado de estos aprendizajes estamos elaborando los documentos complementarios un proceso conjunta con nuestro colega Prata, Beatriz y todo lo, lo que tenemos con Seed Change. Y en torno a ello, entonces, también hemos generado metodologías de la Feria de Diversidad en Cuba eh, que están puestas en manos de... We are actually okay, working this, uh, recently uh, in this context. We have work that includes with the different the elements for the certification. Uh, Lessons learned and good practices have been used to scale up the, uh, in Cuba. Is uh, being uh, extended at the national the level. Ministry of Agriculture and specific section. Uh, An office in the working on, on seeds and the genetic resources and also a, are analyzing are the seed law that's actually happening right now, and we actually would like to be included. This topic was already presented to the government, the president, the president of the, of the republic, this, and we presented, uh, we presented the different the elements different, uh, that we were able to work. And show its results, the agricultural seed production, the, and uh, commercialization marketing. of uh, agricultural seeds, and also the uh, uh, participation in uh, the certification also. And this will help uh, in the production of uh, food uh, throughout the country. This methodology is being articulated to be so that it can be uh, implemented at the municipal uh, municipal farms. And it's also the local seed banks are important. And, uh, and we want to provide uh, seeds that are adapted uh, in different uh, crops.
we are working uh, considerably in the development of uh, municipal networks. The uh, seed production is an essential uh, component of this process and is uh, part of a strategy at the national level and uh, in the municipalities. And we are defending the local seed communities so that they can be integrated in the uh, initial points of a self uh, uh, sufficiency of the municipalities. We have been working in 55 municipalities of the city of the country who have implemented all these things. And in the public uh, policies, there is a uh, set of actions, such as the diagnostics of uh, the, the seed security there, the certification. And in, this, in these activities, uh, we are improving the capacity of uh, the local uh, persons involved. The, uh, this uh, process has played a, an important role in a better uh, of our, and we have worked a lot in creation of uh, innovative groups at the local level who have been specialized in uh, other activities also, in addition to uh, seeds. And uh, all this uh, has uh, generated a lot of lurking, learning in the uh, local production of seeds. This was a great contribution and we're continuing to work with the uh, uh, practices. Other actors are uh, generating uh, other processes of innovation. Uh, methodologies, and in this way, developing new uh, learning spaces. And we have uh, developed cycles of learning and uh, innovation, such as uh, the uh, local committees have been recognized by uh, the national government and have contributed to the uh, self-sufficiency of the municipalities. And this is, and we, in this way, we have been articulating uh, local knowledge in the uh, in the production of seeds. And this has also generated a lot of innovations and has created a lot of added value for these uh, locally certified seeds and, there, uh, and has improved. in the patrimony of uh, the community. We have to have uh, adapted cultivars uh, to take into account uh, different local conditions and including also uh, climate change and also the preferences of uh, the local population. Very often in the market, uh, we, we can have been able to identify uh, different uh, steps to implement all this. We have to facilitate the free and systematic ac access of the greatest pos the diversity possible of uh, varieties and crops, technologies, information and knowledge. And we also have to promote the experiment experimentation by uh, farmers on their farms to ident identify 
alternatives that are adapted to their needs, their local conditions, and their specific preferences. And in this way, we can implement uh, training capacities in action for uh, farmers, researchers, lead political leaders, and students. And so it's all the family has to be involved in this. And we also have to centralize financial decision making. So this is the part of everything that we have learned in uh, this process. And it was a pleasure for us to uh, share uh, this with you. And this is where I will end my presentation. And I'm available to continue a dialogue regarding this uh, learning processes. And also, the, all this will be available. And you can see on uh, the slide uh, my contact information. Also, thank you very much once again. And we will continue to uh, be in contact with you. It's a pleasure. I salute you from Cuba to all. Thank you to uh, our technical team and Beatriz for facilitating getting the recording from Rosa playing and to our translators as we uh, work intercontinentally to have trilingual translation today. The recordings and all the presentations will be available and shared to everyone who is registered for the program yesterday and today. And we also hope to uh, invite all of you to future events similar to this, particularly on the seed security assessment and action plan processes, which we'll have in a couple of months. Beatrice, would you like to add something? If there is anything like, uh, because there was a lot of breaking of the translation and... We've gone through lots of different uh, phases of work with them. At first, Inca was started to return diversity to uh, the fields, to, to Cuban farms, following um, the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union and the loss of uh, many of the chemical inputs that Cuba was uh, depending on. Um, so this transition required agroecology and it required more diversity. So returning crop diversity and many of the traditional practices as well. Uh, to restore soil fertility. And um, so the PIAL program, the Program for Local Agricultural Innovation, was really part of that work to increase crop diversity and bring what was in the gene banks back into the fields. And they did seed fairs, they used participatory plant breeding, uh, farmer to farmer learning, and focusing on um, farmer knowledge and uh, farmer solutions as well, hence the concept of innovation. And as part of that, through the years, we've had at Sea Change a chance to collaborate closely with our, our colleagues in Inca uh, on methodologies, which is quite exciting. So the seed security assessment methodology was collaboratively produced with Inca and then taken to places around the world. And uh, many of our uh, partner organizations that are present today have done seed security assessments in different communities and really important results coming out of that helping guide planning, what to save, what to focus priorities on, how to engage with um, government um, uh, officials and, and state agencies on seed conservation, as well as really showing how farmer seed systems uh, really continue to be the, the most crucial source of seeds for farmers, for smallholder and indigenous farmer communities. So that was really a, a wonderful thing coming out of that collaboration. And now we, we've worked in recent years with Pratap uh, leading the way on how we can learn from all these examples from around the world on local certification and registration. And Pratap has been uh, working with uh, Inca on a methodology. So uh, and Cuba has developed local certification committees in more than 27 municipalities now using a methodology that they've adapted uh, through this collaboration with Sea Change, as well as colleagues in Central America through um, something called the Mesoamerican Par Collaborative uh, Participatory Plant Breeding Program, which that's not the exact title, but uh, I'll get that to you. And uh, learning from experiences Costa Rica, for example, where they have very good system for uh, local uh, seed certification by smallholder cooperatives. 
So um, I hope I'm not rambling on too long, but it is to say that everything is connected here. Everything we're talking about is so connected. And that's why we were so excited about this webinar to get all these partners, uh, organizations and others um, around the world talking about when is, is certification useful and how it can be done in ways that really uh, value and respect farmers' rights. And I think the Cubans have really supported this, uh, this work internationally. So I'll leave it there, I think, unless Patap, you want to add anything, but uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Bea. I think uh, that was a, a very useful addition. I think uh, as we have seen like three presentation and it's particularly this uh, Cuban presentation uh, was actually, as you know, like uh, the, the seed production and the seed production and marketing of certified seed in Cuba was highly centralized. Uh, and also the seed produced on the government farm or the farm, um, the kind of cooperatives, uh, cooperative farm um, managed by the, 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 the national authority, well, those seeds were going to certain priority kind of uh, municipality. So all the municipality, the farmers from different municipality uh, had no kind of access uh, to those, even those seeds. Um, so this was like how to, uh, how to decentralize that uh, seed production of certified seed of the, uh, this, the variety which, is, which, which were actually um, developed by the, the National Research Institute. So this was like more kind of decentralizing that at the municipality level, so that uh, they have uh, they have they have uh, kind of capacity to produce the seed of the the the, the crops and the variety uh, which which uh, meeting farmers' need and preference preferences in the municipality. So that that was a big shift from very centralized to decentralized, but that has a lot of other benefit of it. For example, like. Uh, uh, the municipal farm uh, so, uh, had like access to uh, the certified seed of the crops and variety which, which was, we were preferred by and was adapted to the local condition. But the second part of it, I don't know whether it was, uh, I didn't follow some of the, uh, some of the translation, but it's also like they are now also including uh, the local varieties like uh, land races and local varieties uh, uh, in that uh, seed production and certification system, which otherwise is not there actually. Even uh, so, that that is a big shift coming through that uh, that um, even that decentralization process. So, just I wanted to add that one. Uh, Kate, if we have still some time before the break, I think uh, that the second presentation uh, or the presentation from uh, Fakodesha from Blanca was. Uh, very useful also in terms of like, I was focusing on impact of PPB, uh, the recent study they had. But if we have some time, like if we can allocate five minutes just to um, share their experience, like how they are, I know we know that they are doing a lot of PPB and there are variety coming out of that PPB process. And so if, if they can share, if it's possible, like about five minutes, how those varieties, which is coming from the PPB, are actually the seed production, of, production and marketing of seed of those PPB, PPB varieties are actually being done. So Blanca, I don't know, how do you see it in terms of time? Perhaps, we are breaking, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have a, a small break right now and perhaps we okay. could come back in 10 minutes and okay. that will give Blanca and uh, they're having a lot of difficulty connecting. Uh, okay. I keep seeing them in and out, in and out. So uh, let's uh, come back at the question times. And we also hopefully will have Marcy from yesterday who lost her connection yeah. mid, yeah, mid yeah. question mm -hmm. yesterday and also give to uh, Honduras a few moments at the start of questions. But let's take a, a break for a moment now. I see lots of webinar. Thank you for joining us all. Uh, and we're looking forward to a period of some questions and discussion right now, which will be moderated by 
Pratap and Bea, Beatrice will be watching for questions in the chat as well. We're wondering if Marcy might be here from Seed Savers Network. Uh, yesterday, she was in mid-question when her internet cut off and she was not able to finish and we wanted to catch her if possible. Are you here, Marcy? Yes, I'm in. Wonderful, I'm so glad. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, can I go first? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for the good presentation that you have also had today. I'll just go to my question that I had yesterday and my apologies for the poor signal that I experienced yesterday. So my question was on uh, using the PGS for organic seed certification. Uh, like as I followed up uh, through the webinar, somehow I noticed that uh, the farmers are engaged largely in uh, doing the descriptors, like identifying the varieties and so on. But I wanted to ask in the PGS, do we have also the consumers and uh, market promoters that are brought on board for, for instance, uh, organic seed certification. And if the consumers are also brought on board when we are doing the participatory guarantee system, at what stage are they uh, brought in for uh, knowledge exchange, for stakeholders trust, for empowerment? At what level are they brought in uh, do, when doing the certification? And also because it is a self-certification and it's largely done by the groups, for the for Nepal where it has been successful, does it have maybe challenges when obtaining or getting the international market or it works best for local market only? Yeah, those are my two questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marcy. I, I think very uh, relevant questions. Uh, can we go to Abdurrahman? Okay, merci, merci beaucoup, Pratap. Thank you very much, uh, Pratap. I don't know if you could all hear me. Yes, we can hear. Uh, so I'll try to um, answer. I also had questions about this. I was listening to all the presenters about uh, guarantee, participatory guarantee systems. And as regards what we do here, there's a bit of a difference. When I was listening, for example, to Blanca, she was saying, I think, that the seeds were taken to the laboratory for germination tests and other tests. In our PGS, all the, the processes take place with all of the actors, the beneficiaries, the decentralized communities, technical services, research, based on a certain number of criteria, which we consider to be indispensable in order to, to determine that the seed is quality seed. And all the criteria that we use are reproducible by the farm communities, that is the beneficiaries. So that anything that can lead us to go to the laboratory to do germination tests or any other tests, that goes into the category of industrial seeds. We have some a certain number of criteria with the participation of everyone. One. Production has to be take place only with organic uh, pesticides. And 
the PGS team determines or, or checks whether what you're using is correct, is a proper pesticide. Is any chemical, un, un, uh, not allowed chemical product being used? Another factor. What about the compost? Is it allowed in organic uh, production? Is it properly de uh, decomposed? The PGS team is uh, very disciplinary, and so complementarity is what gives us uh, what gives people confidence in our process. The difference with our system between our system and modern certification systems is that, or conventional systems, is that the farmers and the certification agents do all the work together before they send it to the laboratory. So there's collaboration. In PGS, it's very difficult for there to be any kind of corruption because uh, it's pretty hard. It's all these different people working together. It, there would have to be a lot of corruption. You can't corrupt everybody. What about the seeds that we're producing? Is this variety reproducible? We have some specifications that take account of all of those factors. And also the germination tests are done. Germination tests are done with, with uh, means that can be used by, or techniques that can be done by the uh, beneficiaries. So in our context, that is how we work. We don't talk about, you know, so, well, first of all, one, one, uh, one uh, party does one thing, another party does another and so on and so forth. It's we have a team that works together to make sure that this project gets done. If there's anything that's out of whack, then the whole system is rejected. And so that is how our PGS works. It is adapted to our context. And that's why certain stakeholders or people can confuse the two systems. I'm doing organic production. If I'm doing organic production, well, then there's no chemical inputs, no uh, chemical fertilizers. And they may call. And then the person, the certifying agency comes and says, okay, yes, you are organic. But with the PGS, also we're going to be producing organic products, but the way that this happens is different. Because it's collective certification based on the ideas of many different specialists in different fields or several different specialists working as a team. That is a, the, the difference between organic certification, for example, and, G, and uh, PGS. So that is basically uh, what I wanted to tell you while waiting for certain a question, for any questions. That's, I can, I can uh, speak to any more specific questions uh, if there are any after that. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I think just very quick uh, one, like uh, related to Mercy's question, like who are there, like uh, the, the local traders also included in the ISPG committee who certifies the seed? I, 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 
I know like farmers are in the committee, but are the local traders or the uh, the, the the trader who who are engaged in the selling seed are also included in the committee? La question est adressée toujours à moi. Uh, that is right. The, the question is asked, is, you're asking me the question, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, voilà, dans notre système, nous avons une boutique de bande qui, qui appartient à la société, à la société coopérative. We have a, a, a shop that belongs to the cooperative. So the work is done with that, or with the, with the seed uh, store as well. Um, but it's a cooperative seed store. Okay. Okay, thank you uh, very no, much. We, uh, we use, uh, yes, and we, we have, uh, you know, biodegradable uh, um, packaging and so on. Yeah, thank you very much. Now over to Felix, uh, if you can quickly just focus on the question like um, whether in the committee there are uh, the user farmers and also the traders in the, in, in the committee and also whether this seed production is for domestic local market or is there also possibility for for export like international market felix over to you yeah eh, gracias y disculpe for, uh... thanks and, and apologies the, sometimes we have internet connection issues here in the office so it was hard for me to understand at the very beginning but based on what i shared yesterday and to I, and after the presentations that we have heard we have seen that there are several differences but specifically for us sometimes there is a lack of knowledge on the traditional knowledge we see on seats here Seed is basically under the domain domain of the farmer. It's the legacy, it's a traditional legacy of ancestors for us. So our farmers, they know pretty well and based on their own knowledge and experience, do know exactly how many seeds they need to preserve for the next crop. So the whole trading is not necessarily something that they look at it specifically, but that uh, community and traditional knowledge has been impacted with conventional agriculture. We have the certified seeds for potatoes, for instance, that uh, farmers did not really knew about before our program, we were able to bring back and protect this traditional knowledge and genetic feasibility and production still challenging at some point so we are trying to promote and enhance farmers i am a son of a farmer myself and i live until i was 15 years old when my father and we were working on the field and when I was taking care of livestock, for instance, at the farm, I was selecting the wheat um, and, and my father collect those good wheat and, and well, he, he didn't use the word in <laughs> the wording, right? But it's a positive selection, well, what he did, but he didn't call it like that. But the point is that in other countries, other partners are organizing uh, themselves for seed certification at the local level. I think that's a very good and positive news in Bolivia. As I shared yesterday, there were changes since 2006 and until 2009, we have experienced that process of changes from a republic to a plurinational state where there are new regulations in place, a participatory certification. The warranty system is for production, for ecological production only. So farmers organize themselves, they can ask, the ministry 
in a specific office, Senape, at a national level. This is an office where they could uh, select varieties, they select who are the producers who are the ones carrying out the assessment. So this is the national regulation for marketing. It's not for import. That's only national production. And you can have your label, the production label, and you can have different stages, transition one, transition two, or a fully agroecological green label, as we call it. And this allows you to co to trade countrywide at the country level in each local or regional uh, level. But that does not necessarily apply for seeds, unfortunately. I think Pratap clarified that quite clearly yesterday. There are international standards we should follow and in the whole warranty um, systems. We follow agroecological systems. They are certified, but we cannot call them certified seeds, at least not nationally. In Cochabamba, you can you can just call it seed. It's a product only for trade. So, so that makes a difference. It is only locally, but we may probably experience changes in the law. law 1345 of production law states that they should have a community seed bank established. Our proposal is to better organize ourselves at the local level, at the municipality level, and that's actually something that is happening at this point. They know that the, those varieties of seeds should be recognized by the government. So we need to work at advocacy efforts should probably focalize on that specific legislation effort. We need to work to try to find researchers or people interested on characterizing the different varieties so that this can be recorded and register as them. And sometimes those technicians um, go and assess and test and carry out their own research. And we need to avoid them to uh, become um, owners. Or, well, I, I don't know whether that answered the question, maybe not um, fully, but this is what I wanted to share on the seats here in my country. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Felix. Uh, Kate, you want to say something? Yes, I just wanted to let everybody know that we do have Rosa from Cuba. She is on Beatrice's telephone in Beatrice's okay. office okay. here. Okay. So yeah. she is able to listen in. And if you have any particular questions uh, about the Cuba example, which is particularly one of a, a large scaling up across the country, uh, and very integrated with um, the, the, the commitment at the government level around seeds. So we do have Rosa available. And I'm, there've been a few questions have come to the chat that I can briefly address. We've mentioned the seed security assessment and action plan a couple of times and uh, virtually all of the presenters yesterday and today have experience on either helping develop the SSAP which really began in, in Cuba with Pratap and our Cuban partners. And now we've done it in 14 countries around the world with various levels of support from other organizations. It has also been done at very small scales and at large scales, such as in Cuba. We do have resources about the action plan, mm. um, but it has various different sizes that can be done depending on what uh, the situation is. We're hoping to have an event specifically about the seed security action plan uh, in a couple, probably within two, the next two months, hopefully within May, where it might be covered in detail. But if you have very specific um, questions and interest in the SSAP, you're welcome to write to myself and I can sort them to the, um, the best individual at Seed Change to speak to or in other situations. Many of our local partners are extremely highly 
skilled and wonderful in the seed security and action plan process as well. It is available in English, French, Spanish, and also in Portuguese at this time. I will put my email in the chat and you're welcome to get in touch. Uh, but the SSAAP can be very small with a group of 15 people in one location, or it can be done uh, district-wide over many hundreds of, of communities as we've seen in the uh, examples yesterday and today. There is a little bit about the SSAP. I will put my email in the chat. Over to you, Pratap and Bea, for a few minutes of open discussion. And then we have some guided questions to gather yep. for our next events. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Kate. I think uh, you rightly responded to some of the... There was one question about the seed security assessment and action planning, like um, how, how long it takes, how much it costs, and who are involved. I think we can discuss that uh, separately as well. But it's, it involves a very participatory approach uh, and is done by uh, the development, like the organization who is working with the farming community. And usually in one community, it takes two to three days, very intensive um, discussion with the farmers. So uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll come back that uh, personally, like uh, who you will have interest and uh, Kate has sent, will be sharing her email for that. Now, regarding coming back to this um, the participatory guarantee system, uh, I think uh, this participatory guarantee system, as we have seen from two presentations yesterday and also uh, some addition, uh, which we had from Abdurrahman and uh, Felix today, is uh, it, it's a kind of pilot uh, 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 trying to use the same uh, principle of a participatory guarantee system, which is like self-guaranteeing, like farmers, uh, guaranteeing their, uh, their their the quality of their seed, uh, and it can be uh, it can follow both uh, organic uh, seed production, but it can also be without organic seed production. Uh, but uh, for seed, I think this is uh, the first time trying to use the same principle of participatory guarantee system for organic or agroecological product. We are using this uh, the, the same principle and process for the seed, uh, and and because uh, and so in the committee, as uh, Felix and Abdurrahman has said, is a multi kind of uh, multidisciplinary coming from different uh, organizations, including farmers, researcher, uh, and also like people involved in trading seed. So that was very clear, uh, and I think uh, um, uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the who is the target for this uh, seed. Basically, as we are struggling for like um, producing and marketing seed of local crop variety, uh, and, and because the current policy in law in, all, in almost all country doesn't allow uh, seed production, certified seed production and marketing of this local uh, and land races variety, uh, we are using this um, alternative approach of uh, participatory guarantee system, uh, where farmers are uh, providing guarantee to, uh, about the quality of the seed they're producing. So, because it's not recognized currently at the moment, is not recognized by the national policy and the seed law, I think this is a pilot and addressing to the domestic, uh, domestic markets or maybe local markets for the, for the local, uh, the seeds of local variety and land races. But once, as I, 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 as we discussed yesterday, uh, the, the ultimate aim is uh, for this system, PGS system, to be recognized by the national seed policy. So once the national seed policy and law recognizes this system of seed production where farmer guarantee their seed, uh, then there could be possibility of uh, even export for international market because once it is recognized by the policy and law of a country that also provides a kind of guarantee for the quality of that seed. So uh, I think uh, there is a lot of a lot of discussion on this and I think uh, a lot of experiences are coming. So um, I think we'll pursue this uh, debate and discussion in the, in, in the future as well. Now, uh, I, I'm ch I was checking the chat, uh, Bea, and uh, we have Susan Walsh, uh, who also um, had... Uh, 
Je voulais yeah. ajouter un petit point. Uh, Tap, I wanted to add a little point here. Yeah, please, can if you be okay. quick, uh, brief? Yeah, brief, yeah, brief, please, so that we can give uh, uh, opportunity for other people. Other brief. Yeah. Brief. Yeah. Brief. Donc, moi, je voulais vous donner uh, so, l'exemple. I just wanted to offer the example of uh, Motila. Because we're still working in partnership with that uh, so that uh, technical service uh, that's offered by the government or the state, and it's had the chance uh, to work with us on the the guaranteed uh, system and uh, the creation of new regions. A lot of those agents were uh, named were appointed as uh, regional directors and uh, the process in mali was used in mambaco and it's the national director of agriculture that we invited to come and validate uh, the system so yeah mamadou was there for that and when the discussions heated up there were 10 regional directors that had already worked uh, on this here and at every stage when there were problems there was one person that would stand up and say oh well i worked on that system and what they were able to create was the best uh, production system for seeds and so with their validation and their reaction they didn't have any issues in bamako so they were able to validate this in one day so that's what I wanted to add as a, from our experience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Abdul Rahman. I think, as I said yesterday, like that's the benefit of like including the formal agency in the committee because they also then uh, support that system and, and, and CG for uh, kind of certification in the future. So with that, uh, thank you again. I think the uh, Bea, if, uh, if you have anything like uh, there was one question and suggestion from uh, Susan was that uh, the same question also uh, is uh, relevant for the presentation which we had today, like in in for FIFA uh, from Honduras and uh, and and uh, from for Cuba also have seat committee also in uh, Honduras uh, with uh, with FIFA we have seat committee. And I, I, I think there is also some kind of uh, a seat committee at the cooperative level uh, at uh, uh, for FECODESA in, in, in Nicaragua. So I'll just give uh, briefly uh, them time to just slightly uh, highlight on like who are in the seat committee, like who, who sits in the seat committee and uh, what are their roles, very briefly. So first to uh, um, uh, Evanis. Evans. No sé si. Bueno. Adelante, Blanca. Okay. Eh, gracias, Jiménez. Eh, yo creo que sí, el Thank tema you, de Ha sido una gran experiencia en todos pues, nuestros países, en nuestro país. Eh, nosotros iniciamos variedades. Hecha las variedades, but había la necesidad de crear ingresos once, para poder sostener. We had these uh, varieties, we had to generate income for these varieties. And this is where we started certifying uh, the seed. And this uh, required uh, institutions, and this is where the cooperatives were created. And once we had the cooperatives, there was a process of registration of varieties in the national system. And this was another challenge for the uh, farmers and to uh, support this uh, activity. Uh, the, 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 
and we had to maintain a quality standard. Lisa, en este caso, pues para nosotros, que en ese momento el Ministerio de Agricultura, eh, eso implica productores, más recursos, más eh, eh, personal capacitado, pues se capacitaron con todo lo que fue el programa, se capacitaron en todos los protocolos de semilla, en la certificación, pero eh, el gran, eh, es, como decíamos nosotros, el nudo que tuvimos fue el tema de comercialización. Uh -huh. No hay un mercado estable para las semillas certificadas. Eh, la demanda varía dependiendo del invierno, si hay un invierno bueno. may vary if it's a good winter. Producers may not need that seed, but if there's bad weather conditions, of course, seeds are more needed. Production costs are even higher. So we decided that apart from having several varieties, it was very complex to have them all. So we were promoting what we call local production of seeds. And it meant that organizations should specialize. It could be corn, sorghum, Each family, each producer could manage their own sanitation quality criteria. And this actually helped that the seed actually arrived to more producers because it was not only price or labels was what were predominant, but rather the quality adapted to the community seeds, accessible through seed banks through cooperatives, through producers or from producers to other producers. So the FPP varieties, as you see, 90% of producers actually use them. Those said that they're actually using those varieties as per the survey. In the case of sorghum, in the case of bean, it depends on the region. There are variations, there are specific areas that still use the FPP variety and those other varieties that were created since the very beginning of the project. So as Pratap said, local system, local seed systems are functional, yes, are more profitable and sustainable on time. And producers and organization of producers are looking at those local systems rather than looking for certifications. In the in our case uh, for local seed production, it cannot be done through the organic certification system. We do it with a technical and chemical um, specific process and costs, or of course, of different inputs have skyrocketed. So now producers are actually focusing on local production because they can use it directly and they can use ecological products and it's more profitable for them at the end. Thanks. Thank you, Blanca. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Jimenez. In our case, in our case, Pratap, we have Odir here, his member of the seat committee. Maybe he can explain what is actually happening there, Odir. You have the floor. Yes, I am a farmer and I'm part of the committee here in Doripa, Honduras. And yes, well, we had a very good experience by using the system and the local seed certification system in place. We went little by little, step by step working hard and trying to go to Senasa and to go to the local institutions because sometimes it is hard for us with local seeds. Government, the government does not recognize our local seeds, but um, we uh, had meetings with government agencies we talk with senasa to try to find a solution to try to ask for their support so that we can actually um, be included in the seed law well 
we have been also visiting the marketplace to see exactly how important it is the local seat and the national market 80 percent of different greens are used for national consumption specifically for our local seed. So conventional seeds only represent 20% in the market. Most of the grain that is consumed is normally local seed production here in Honduras. So we see the importance of being included or having the seed committee at the local level, which can manage and work and, and can show benefits to all of us. It has been quite important, not only for us, but at national level, we carried out training processes to several farmers, capacity building since 2011. We organized the seed committee and we established ourselves in 2011 and we can certify our seeds with Senasa support with lab testing and this team of producers is working hard in the field. They are also doing the auditing for quality assurance purposes. We are seven, seven different auditors. Those uh, three are youth, four adults. Um, they're all well trained on pest disease management on and they understand that different pests and diseases that could be probably transmitted uh, for the different seed and they also understand quality controls and standards that have been used uh, in mesoamerica and we have seen results the volumes of production that we were able to achieve thanks to this system of control. And so far, so would we, we are very satisfied because of the work we do. And we are very thankful with the support provided. Different donors and organizations that are always taking care and paying attention to our work, we are always very grateful because we were able to feed lots of different families with our work to this local production system. Lots of progress have been seen since 2011 on the production side. Increase of the yield has been significant. Uh, maybe if we look at numbers, I think definitely an increase has been observed and, and the value uh, has increased. The, the value of production um, has provided better price to us thanks to the certification process. These are results that motivates our work and provide us the chance to widespread it. We do not have lots of committees yet in Honduras to work on this, but we definitely need to still Typically duplicated, but thanks, 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 Adit, for your um, experience sharing. Thanks, Pradap. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Beatrice, uh, is there anything from, uh, from Cuba? If not, then... Uh... Rosa, is, uh, Rosa is writing something that I'll share once I, I've got it. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think uh, we are coming to the close of this session but before that maybe i'll just uh, i'll just uh, also like uh, reflect a, a few points on on certification uh, i think uh, uh, Beatrice? Uh, yes i just put in the chat yeah. um rosa's message yeah, and okay. um, 
which she says in relation to this in Cuba, there have been various uh, paths to recognize um, CCLS, que es? Low, yes, sorry, local certification um, committees. So CCLS is the local seed cert certification committees uh, to link with specialists from um, phytosanitary. Uh, so part of the formal seed system in processes of certification. And members of the committee uh, include those people from phytosanitary as well as farmers. And the composition of the committee includes these specialists and farmers and they have uh, frequent uh, meetings. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, think, uh, the, I think there is also debate and question like, do we really need certification? Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, as long as uh, the, the seed uh, produced by the farmers, like uh, uh, in all the cases, uh, we may not need uh, seed certification. The certification only comes like for, for seed production locally, production exchange and locally selling the seed uh, uh, in, in many cases without putting any label, uh, uh, it doesn't require certification. And, and as I said yesterday in the, uh, the farmer seed system, the seed marketing is mostly based on the trust and the people knows like where do you, where we get the, the best quality seed, which farmer. So certification only is required when we enter into formal marketing system because uh, the policy also um, uh, and, and seed law actually protects the consumer, the user of the seed, the other farmers. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, for that purpose, certification is usually done. Now, in case of like, uh, because the certification process is, uh, uh, is cumbersome, uh, also because it is designed for a formal seed or commercial seed, where the formal, like the government institution, research institution or private uh, companies with all the capacity, they they can follow those processes of uh, uh, developing new crop variety or seed, new seeds, and producing uh, and and registering those seed and then producing certified seed. So, uh, so uh, that is like for far usually for the farmers or the farmer committee or farmer group, it is difficult to 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 follow that and therefore we are trying to see like what alternative methods uh, could be used to allow to enable farmers uh, to uh, still to produce and market seed uh, locally and if possible also certify whether it's certified themselves by themselves or some kind of certification by, by, from the formal authority now let me share just uh, in a few minutes, like there was two cases, uh, um, as we know from Honduras, our colleague FIFA, and also Peko Desa from Nicaragua, that they were using an alternative mechanism uh, where uh, the, the new variety from PPB, participatory plant breeding, which were coming from like in, 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 uh, in um, FIFA case in Honduras uh, from CL group were engaged in uh, participatory plant breeding and, and developing new varieties of beans and, and, and maize, corn, and, and also uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Nic uh, uh, Nicaragua, uh, our uh, the, uh, the FECO Desa was working with the farmers cooperative and developing those varieties. So what uh, the, 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 the alternative ways they, they adopted was those new varieties were actually announced at the municipal function. So that was a kind of uh, trying to get some recognition from local gover government, like municipal uh, label. And then the, the, the cooperatives in Fekodesa and Sial in Honduras was involved in seed production and they were um, marketing or uh, distributing or marketing those seeds through their members, like in case of uh, for their side it was like uh, cooperative members who were like purchasing those seed because they knew the quality of the, the seed also but without any certification without any level and same was true in 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 in, uh, in Honduras also that those seeds were uh, sold as a, not as a seed but people knew about the seed but they were sold as a grain for seed purpose so just uh, that uh, uh, some some addition to that 
Now, um, if there are more questions, we can still look at the chat, but uh, I think we are going to second next um, session uh, where uh, we'll putting, we are putting some questions uh, to all of uh, our participants uh, and get their feedback. So I now hand over this session to uh, my colleague, uh, Beatrice. That is over to you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for everyone who's been able to stay for so long. We recognize that in the session, um, people, especially the people who are the seed uh, specialists, are very excited about this. I think I still have energy, but we understand if people have to leave. But we'd like to spend the last few minutes before we go to um, acknowledgments and also closing words from AMA, uh, from Seed Change. We would like to spend a few minutes to talk about, to do a participatory exercise to understand perhaps uh, what are some possibilities for collaboration. We are looking currently at a possible, at, at, we're seeking funding for a possible, uh, for perhaps one or two regional uh, in-person events and to continue the tradition of the SOS training events and always building, right? Always building forward. And we've heard some really incredible things um, yesterday and today, as Pratap called it, breakthroughs. You know, the things that are happening that really are, uh, really are exciting. And, and we want to perhaps think maybe do we, well, how do we visualize this work? So if you um, bear with me, I'm going to share just um, a few questions on my screen here. Are you able to see that? And I have them in the three languages. So I'll just do first uh, English. So English is, uh, as I just said, we've heard some important breakthroughs for farmers' rights. Um, and we especially spoke about seed production and marketing. And so what should we do? You know, uh, so I, I think also in the chat, we saw this excitement as well as how can I do this? Or where can I connect on this issue? How can I get, um, you know, more connected with uh, community seed banks and, and access to new diversity? So how can, uh, some questions for you, how can we promote and visualize this work? So we really want to promote this work as a contribution to uh, recognition and valuing of uh, farmers' rights to freely save, um, use, exchange, and sell their seeds. What role for regional global networks? So right now, uh, each of, uh, all of our organizations and as individuals, as practitioners, um, we're involved in different networks. How do we connect? What are some ways that we can connect? And seed change is involved in a few networks, but we're not necessarily all speaking at, um, together. And ideas for future collaborations. So uh, is, are there some ideas about how we can keep in touch and how we can share? And so in Espanol, creo que ya escucharon por la traducción, pero... So probably you heard it already through the interpreter, but basically these are the questions. No? How can we promote and how do we actually see the role, the key role of the different regional and global networks and ideas for future collaboration. So workshops, seminars, in-person meetings, capacity building. Of course, we need fun, but we and we need to think out of the box. But ideas, and now in French. No, and uh, now the same thing. We've just heard in English in French. So I'll just uh, pause here while she delivers the same material, but in French. Um, hello. So I'm opening uh, the floor to you. I, mean, I hope that was okay. I'm sorry for the translators. <laughs> you translated three times, but I wanted everyone to see the questions. And um, I also have a, a, a note taking um, application that I'll open up, but I'll leave it uh, for, for comments and questions. I see Jimenez is already. Uh, Jimenez, por favor. Lo que está proponiendo compañeros y compañeras es muy interesante. I think it's quite interesting reflection what you are actually proposing and to be just part of this webinar um, even with lots of different questions and answer questions uh, that may need further participation of a change. But uh, all my team here 
their department, maybe you can see them and they're even writing down their summaries and this type of activities call our attention because lots of that knowledge within the communities where our institutions work, they're not necessarily actually shared with the world. So it is important to listen to the others, but I believe that one option like this webinar, we should continue organizing these webinars and maybe bring it uh, to closer age so that we can share more and more information and experiences so that we can use it to have a better understanding of what's happening around the world. So keep on with webinars and to see and check what is happening around the world. Scaling up is important for us as well. Uh, we did not have enough time to share everything, but definitely we would like to complete the whole process so that we can reach out other communities, other organizations. And advocacy. Advocacy, try to work on advocacy to work together with the different governmental levels so that we can try to uh, have some sort of influence. And this is important uh, for future generations right? because youth, you should also be integrated in our communities. They are leaving the field. They are leaving uh, the rural areas. And of course, agriculture should be in hand of the youth. Thanks. Thanks. And on the three questions, I think those are good questions to reflect about. Climate change, it's a global issue for all of us. When we work with seeds, we understand that climate change and seeds are important and interconnected because of uh, food security. We have shared several experiences, conventional agriculture, had or used certified seed, but after two, three years, you need to change that seed. But those that we're using now, those are being used for ages. So there's this hidden knowledge of uh, producers and farmers. I don't know how many years they have been using their traditional seeds um, without actually affecting their crops. So basically, how to visualize that specific work, you ask? Well, we need to have a global approach. We need to see it in a comprehensive way and try to interlink this with the climate change because there is an interconnection with this point. So maybe to try to link those two topics because in 30 years time, there won't be food in communities. And Farmer training is also important, I believe. They are the ones working on leadership, self-team. I think those, those will be the points that I think is important. And what else? Mm, I also uh, believe youth, the youth, uh, there's a lot of migration to the cities. And little by little, we won't have farmers in the field. Processes are different, for sure. Uh, and the processes are different, for sure. In Bolivia, we are working on recognizing the farm seeds. Just because of the legal uh, framework allowing it, the different policies that are protecting it at this point because of the legal context, but we'll see. Uh, so this is important. And NGOs work support, I think that. Local government empowerment, uh, we work here a lot on agroecology, for instance. And this has helped 
uh, approved different laws or pass different laws busy management irrigation so the municipalities empower themselves on this point in irrigation for instance in bolivia we are having issues with water and water management because uh, of uh, rainfall scarcity so this has changed it this uh, work that we need to focus on leaders and families exchanges visits among municipalities at the local level to get to know the legislation 144 article of that specific law refers to advocacy levels at that point. We are part of those different committees working on legislation and we have specific plan to discuss some production. So basically, yeah, I think that we are open to discuss and share uh, new actions if needed. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Felix. I'd like to uh, jump in if I could. Yeah, please go okay. ahead. I also think we have to put an emphasis on processing of local products. The work that we're doing What can we do to add value the pro to the products so that uh, more money stays in the communities? For example, all the work that we're doing, all the efforts that are put in to get healthy food, uh, to produce healthy food and then on the market, uh, in the marketplace, you have to sell this at a pittance. Um, to processors, you can't sell it at the same price as if you were to process it yourself. This is something I don't think that is often that it comes up uh, enough. What strategies can we use to add, to, to do all the value added processing here in uh, coming out of agri agroecological uh, production here in the communities? For example, grain. How can we include processing for grains? For example, uh, bread baking or potatoes, what can be done with those in a value added uh, perspective? These are the kinds of programs I'd like to see happen. That's one thing. Second one is we have to work on communication. Because we have, what was what we do on the ground is not necessarily publicized. We need to greatly improve this. Sem l'avenir, for example, doesn't have uh, doesn't really communicate the results of all the projects the way and give them the visibility that we need, especially the uh, participatory plant breeding uh, efforts and the seed uh, PGS systems. 
these are the two main points I'd like to uh, present to you in response to your questions. And when I mean when I say communication or publicity, I want our results to be known in official versions, whether in English or in French, or in Asian languages. Or that is to say, they are known in in they are these results are made known in inter international languages, but not in local languages the languages we use as part of our daily struggle. So I think that the communication also has to be done, has to, we have to think in terms of using uh, local languages. Also a comment from Rosa. Other elements that would allow uh, we need to be able to scale up um, the national seed programs uh, linked in connection with the municipal political uh, authorities uh, responsible for these policies at the local level. And systematize and try to identify synergies identified in synergies among formal systems and local certification, which are the benefits that this actually generates at the local level, says Rosa. Thank you. Thank you, Bea. I think, uh, should we uh, close this session? I think we are also having some input uh, coming uh, in chat, which we can also include in our analysis. Um, uh, and uh, I think um, in the interest of time, uh, I think uh, we are closing this uh, session now. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, your emails and uh, I think uh, we'll continue to uh, communicate uh, in, in future as well, uh, as, uh, as uh, Bea has uh, had uh, uh, said that this will be like ongoing uh, kind of uh, initiative of linking and the work on seed, uh, seed sovereignty uh, and food sovereignty uh, in, the, in the future. So with that, I think there was a, a very uh, a good and excellent contribution from all of our participants. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I think it enriched uh, this uh, two days uh, seminar in many ways. And I think uh, there will be a lot of, uh, I think in coming days, uh, some follow up and also see how we can continue this uh, kind of uh, um, uh, sharing kind of sharing platform in the future. Now over to you, Bea, if you have any, anything, any remarks on this, and then, um, and then uh, uh, introduce Ama uh, for her reflection and uh, closing remarks. Say thank you so much and thank you for your patience for that exercise. And I think it's some really great ideas and there's lots in the chat. We'll definitely continue to reflect on this and we're committed to uh, visibilizing this work. And so this is something we'll definitely be in touch uh, with you about. And um, before ending to Ama, the closing words, I'd just like to also thank everyone and thank also the Cody Institute for all your technical support and thank you to the interpreters as well. Thank you. Over to Ama. Thank you so much, Bea. And um, I think I want to thank everyone who participated, especially folks who participated in the two uh, day sessions. I know it was very long, but it was also very enriching and I learned so much from everyone. Uh, a special thank you to Pratap, Bea, Kate, for working uh, really hard to pull this together. I know it was not easy. Mm -hmm. And also our partner at Cody Institute uh, for your uh, amazing support too and, and supporting the coordination. And of course, all the interpreters uh, for your hard work. 
I know gathering together via Zoom is always not the easiest thing to do, especially with so many technical uh, issues and challenges, but everybody kind of held through. I, um, I, for one, I'm looking forward to a day where we can all gather in person one day to share because there's so much knowledge. I think this is really more of a reunion of the SOS um, uh, partners and, and, and bringing different folks together. Um, I learned so much. And to, to speak on what Daniel shared in his uh, opening remarks today, you know, the criminalization of seats, you know, and I think that was a statement that really stood out for me um, as well and the need for us to increase uh, the work and to share knowledge and to work closer together um, around issues of uh, seed loss and, and seed policy. So I will leave it there. I know it's been long and, and just say thank you all very much. And I look forward to furthering this work. Thank you. Thank you, Amma. And Amma is the executive director of Seed Change. Um, thank you. Everyone's been saying thank you so much. We will be following up with an email to everyone who has registered for this webinar with the recordings, the presentations, and also uh, relevant links that we would like to share with everyone. Uh, I encourage you to sign up for both the, the Cody newsletters and the Seed Change newsletters and follow us on Facebook in particular, because that is where we share relevant short pieces, but also links to both the international and the Canadian uh, land-based work. I am aware that there are some people joining us yesterday and today from Canada and are interested in seed security and seed sovereignty participatory growouts, participatory plant breeding and research actions here in Canada, which Seed Change is also deeply involved in. And we're very interested in connecting you on that level as well. So we look forward to following up with many of you and to future events. Do watch for a particular event uh, specifically on the seed security assessment in the coming months. Thank you again to everyone. This has been a wonderful two days and we wish you a great rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Thank you from Seed Change. Thank you.